Atlanta's number one radio stations, Swanky 93.3 and The Heat 94.6. Radio Stations has you covered. From our studios to our newsroom at KLP Entertainment. Listen on all major audio platforms like Spotify, iHeartRadio, Audacity, Apple Podcast, Stitcher Podcast, Google Podcast, YouTube and more. Live from our newsrooms brings back our hit news network, SNN, with many news anchors like Arthur Brooks, Addison Hayden, and Beatrix Gemma. Brings you stories about the news worldwide. Tune in on Atlanta's number one stations, Swanky 93.3 and The Heat 94.6 radio stations. To get the latest news today, listen on all major audio platforms like Spotify, iHeartRadio, Audacity, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Podcast, Google Podcast, YouTube, and more. The latest show goes after hours. The Beyond Swanky Podcast with Kennedy Lucas brings out more for our Lucas Nation fans. Tune in for reviews, topics, and even special guests. We go beyond the swankiness as it's juicy as hell with our DJ, DJ Lupezzi, playing nothing but the hits on the Spotify podcast version. Live from our studio of Swanky Studios, it's the Beyond Swanky Podcast with Kennedy Lucas on Atlanta's number one stations Swanky 93.3 and the Heat 94.6 radio station listen on all major audio platforms like Spotify iHeartRadio Audacity Apple Podcast Stitcher Podcast Google Podcast YouTube and more are now tuned in to Atlanta's hottest radio show. Our stories from our studio to your ear. It's the Beyond Swanky Podcast. With your host, Kennedy Lucas. On Swanky 93.3 radio station. The Heat 94.6 radio station. Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another exciting podcast here today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Beyond Swanky podcast with your host, KLP Kennedy Lucas. Of course, we got the crew here up in the studio. Of course, T is here, Monica's here, Addison and Arthur, they're here. Everybody's here, DJ Lupizzi. I ain't forget about you, man. You here as well to give us some bangers on today's show. Welcome back to the podcast of the Beyond Swingy podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I'm excited, right? I'm excited for the topics for today. And, you know, it's another great week, right? Because, you know, we, we starting to see a little bit more green when it comes down to the leaves and trees, but we're seeing green on our vehicles too. So I got to say, everybody out there, please stay safe. Go and buy you a big box of emergency powder, wherever you get it from, Kroger, Publix, Walmart. Go and get some of that. Mix it with some juice. And so that way that helps boost your immune system because it is pollen season. Uh, we're, we're hitting March, right? It's the, it's the time of year where pollen springs out. And I got to say, I think pollen's going to be like heavy this this uh, year. So uh, I do say to a lot of people, please stay safe because pollen is real. It's here. A lot of people are allergic to it. I know I am, but, I, you know, I have my immune boosted and I'm wearing a mask nowadays back again and making sure that I don't touch anything. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's one of those things that is coming, guys, is it's coming out there now. Before we get to the news and the topics of conversation today, I got to shout out always Ebony Naysong's Liggins. This past Saturday, we did a podcast. If you guys don't know about it quite just yet, you should by now. Um, but we did a, a podcast special episode. We had her on in the studio, in the radio station to give us great stories about GDN and GGC and our alumni -ness. So again, uh, that's, a, that's a podcast, T, that we did. We had so much fun because we put it together 
We had some great conversations and it was about an hour long. So it was a very, very good podcast. Uh, I enjoyed it. I really did enjoy the podcast. We, we talked about a lot of things. Uh, it is available streaming right now. YouTube, Audacity, Stitcher Podcast, iTunes, Spotify, I Heard Radio. It's out there, ladies and gentlemen. And for all of my GGC alumni, don't forget March 15th, sponsored by the School of Liberal Arts, is going to be the GGC alumni mixer in Lawrenceville. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait to to, to go there and really see uh, the impactfulness of the mixer. Uh, I'm excited. I'm super, super excited for it. And I, I hope you guys are excited for it as well. Um, next Wednesday, March 15th, it's coming, guys. Now, let's get on to the topics of conversation today. If you guys don't know what we do on the Beyond Squeaky podcast, on occasion, we do have juicier stories, which we do have a juicy story uh, later on in today's show. But We've got to do our reviews. If you guys don't know, we, we like to do our reviews. And, of course, the first review, as always, as we're getting closer to the final episode of the season, we got to talk about The Last of Us. Now, The Last of Us, Episode 8, if you guys don't know by now, it came out yesterday, Sunday. Well, by the time you're hearing the podcast, it's Tuesday, but it came out Sunday. And it came out swinging with a 9 percentile on IGN. And get this, guys, this episode has reached the highest uh, numbers of, of, of uh, records of streamers and watchers episode eight did amongst every other episode. Since that's the episode's highlight, um, this episode was really, really good. Um, it was really, really good. Now, the episode name is Vinny Son of a Preacher Man. Of course, we've got to see Scott Shepard do his thing. We got to saw we saw Troy Baker. Now, if you guys don't know, each episode, we get to see a glimpse of everybody that's playing their characters in the video game we get to see uh, in the show. Now, uh, they all die, like Troy Baker does die. Spoiler alert to a lot of people there, T. You guys, if you guys haven't seen episode eight, pause this podcast, uh, watch the episode, and then come back. Because we, we might spoil some things, but Troy Baker does die in this episode. Of course, we did see uh, Jeffrey Pierce that plays Tommy. He dies in the uh, episode. We haven't seen Ashley Johnson yet, but she's in this episode this season as well. Um, so episode eight of HBO's uh, Last of Us plunges us into new depths of the depravity as a Colorado resort proves that hell can indeed freeze over. Scott Shepard's David is a suitable chilling adversary for Bella Ramsey, who finds yet more layers within Ellie in an hour of television that's hard to take your eyes off. It shows the it, it it's the show's most disturbing chapter yet. It is. Um, it, this episode is about you know, you've got Joel that is still hurt. You know, he's been bitten and infected. So he's he's kind of uh, chilling out. He's 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 near death. But of course, uh, Ellie, she's going out hunting. She hunts for some food because they're starving, finds a deer. But she stumbles upon Troy Baker. He plays a character named James. And then Scott Shepard, he plays the character David. They stumble upon. And now Scott Shepard's uh, the kid's character David is kind of like the the preacher of that uh, of the whole. Uh, it's a resort that they're at, but it's a whole kind of cult kind of thing. And he's kind of like the preacher, like the, the the cult leader, if you will. And I'm not saying that cults or preachers they're relating, but it's kind of like he's like the all father, and everybody is following him, right? So very, very excited for that. Of course, they have a, a kind of a change exchange. Uh, they try to go in and, of course, Troy Baker goes back, finds medicine to give to Ellie because, you know, Ellie has a shotgun or maybe that was a sniper. And, of course, you know, he she's at there at Ellie's knees. So, of course, they make an exchange. She runs away. And of course, they go out and, you know, he, uh, excuse me, Ellie tries to go and heal Joel with the uh, medicine. Leading tracks to for uh, David and the crew to go find them. And of course, she gets kidnapped and everything gets a little creepy after that. Um, it, it, like I say, it's a very disturbing chapter because the closest we've become to a horror, despite there not being an infected in sight, we've seen glimpses throughout the series. But episode eight 
is where The Last of Us fully commenced to showing us humanity's ability to descend into uh, barbarism, meaning cannibalism, meaning, uh, you know, people eating people, right? And that's one thing Ellie finds out with this, this cult, this organization, if you will, that when people have died within the cult, they cut them up and they chop them up and then they eat them. Cannibalism, barbarism. The introduction of David uh, spearheads this, a cannibal um, pedophile, which she is a pedophile. If you guys remember towards the end of the episode, there was a big fight between David and Ellie, and then the, the, the barn, the resort catches on fire. He, you know, attempts to, you know, get kind of close to Ellie tries to climb on top of her and tries to, you know, rape her in, in a way. Uh, didn't, she, she's traumatized from that, right? And you really get to see, and I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, guys, but you towards the end, you know, Joel kind of sparks up, you know, the medicine works. He, he's hurt. He's hurt in his, in his side there, but he's really going in and really trying to save Ellie. I really like this. And then they expounded on this tea when it came down to the behind the episode uh, snippet that they show at, at every end of each episode that it's good that that Joel wasn't the hero of this episode, right? We're expecting Joel to heal up and he's going to save Ellie. No, the only person that saved Ellie was Ellie, right? Because towards the end, you know, she gets the, the big uh, carving knife and stabs David to death, like really going in, really, because she's traumatized, right? You know, uh, he tries to get close. He tries to manipulate Ellie, and towards the end, he tries to get um, weird with it and try to. He's, he's a pedophile, right? So she's traumatized, right? She's traumatized to death with that. So when she goes out, and she don't know what to do, she didn't know Joel healed up. So Joel comes behind her. She's scared. She's scarred for her life, and then she leaves in for a hug, like that father daughter figure. And I really like that because. Towards the end, when Joel and Ellie met, meet up, they hug, right? And he says, I got you, baby girl, right? That's something he hasn't said in 20 plus years because of his daughter, Sarah, dies in the first episode. And that was 20 years ago in the story, right? So it really shows you that 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 father daughter moment, right? Because that's something he hasn't said in a very, very long, very, very long time. So Scott Shepard's character, David, he's really... Uh, is tick, uh, ticking off uh, all the things on the checklist written uh, in Hill. Traits made all the more disturbing by revealing his former life as a teacher. We don't know at what point he turned into this monster, but despite his claims of empathy for the quarter quarter accepts due to their ability to connect on an emotional level it's clear he's chosen to embrace the darkness and reject what humanity remains within him really really good read um like i say this episode really is good it is really top notch uh it's it's a good episode where you can't you introduce new characters of course they die in the series but you really get to understand you you understand a lot. You really do understand a lot. I got to say that Scott Shepard did uh, really, really well when it comes down to playing these characters. I enjoyed uh, the most. I enjoyed Scott Shepard in this episode. I enjoyed Troy Baker in this episode. Um, Troy Baker did mention that it's, it's really uh, jarring for him uh, being that, you know, he played Joel, the character in the video game, and now he's coming back uh for sure uh to play another character so it's very quite exciting uh guys i'm always gonna say on every podcast this is a show i definitely would not sleep on it's just that damn good it just it really is good i'm very as we get closer episode nine comes out this sunday the 12th of march I'm a little sad because of season one, right? And I, I wonder how long it's going to take for season two. Because definitely, we all know that they got renewed for season two. After episode one, they immediately got renewed by HBO uh, with season two. So very, very sad that we're coming to a close when it comes down to this. But 
rest assured we've got Bel Air and uh, season four of Succession. I've been rewatching Succession lately because I got to get caught up. I remember watching all three of those seasons, but I, I got to remember because we're preparing for season four. So it's a lot of shows coming out. But as we get closer, I'm so excited to see how they're going to close season one. Um, like I say, this is good. This is a good show. Uh, Scott Shepard did really well. Troy Baker did really well. Again, Bella Ramsey did astonishingly well in this one because like episode seven, there's a lot of emotion that Bella Ramsey portrays in episode seven with uh, Riley. So now you've got episode eight where things are getting a little bit darker for her, right? She's seeing some things that she probably shouldn't have seen at a very young age or character wise. She's seen some things. So now she's jarring for life. She's a little bit nervous. Um, it's good. Watch it, guys. Honestly, don't sleep on it. It's one of those shows that it's 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 really, really good. Um, you guys do not want to miss out on that for sure. Continuing on with our film review show reveal. Uh, yes, we've got to watch, we've got to review this uh, because I will be reminisce if I didn't. I will be upset if I did not review this movie. Now, speaking of HBO, because I guess we're on an HBO train, not a sponsor for HBO. But again, if HBO wants to sponsor us, you can go ahead. Oh, man, this movie here. Now, I want to say on record on the podcast, T, I can't really hate, right? Because, you know, this movie hit theaters. It may have not lasted long in theaters, but it hit theaters. And it's on a big major network like HBO Max, right? When it comes to my movies, I'm only on Tubi TV and Amazon Prime Video. So I can't hate so much. I can't, right? As a filmmaker myself... By the way, guys, check out my IMDb page, by the way. Huge. Let's go ahead and get that out the way. T, officially on IMDb. If you guys don't know, that is a huge database website that every filmmaker, writer, producer, artist, director want to be on that page. So I finally got mine up there. It highlights uh, quite a few films of mine. Uh, Eden Prime, for for one. Uh, Skipper and Carper Saves the World. Got to give my girl, Shel Pacell, a shout out. Two Wrongs 2. Um coming very soon that's all i can say can't really say too much after that because i'm on an nda there but we're excited very very excited so check out my imdb page i work really hard for that i know it's small because i know a lot of people have been on the imdb they're on major networks but th this is a huge accomplishment for me but anyway this movie hit theaters and it, it, it came out and at first i was excited but then after seeing the movie, I'm like, oh, OK. This movie I'm talking about is House Party. House Party 2023 uh, starring LeBron James, Jacob Lattimore and uh, Tucson Cole. Um, here's my takes. You know, you got Jacob Lattimore and Tinsley Cole, their characters, Kevin and uh, Damon. They're going out. They're, they're running a cleaning service. Now, Jacob Lattimore's character has a daughter. He got accepted to a new job with IT, but he needs to make money to pay for his, his daughter's um, private school tuition. You got Damon, who is a, a party influencer, but he has social media, but he likes the front and think that he's hot shit, right? And they're promoting this party. They want to promote another party to make money. And they do it. Uh, well, let me let me slow down here. They work for a cleaning service. Their day jobs is they're, they're working for a cleaning service. They clean houses for their daytime jobs while doing all this other stuff by night. Now, Jacob Lattimore is also a beat maker. Rightfully so, because Jacob Lattimore, he's an R&B singer. He's an artist. So, you know, rightfully so. And they're cleaning this house and they find out that they're cleaning LeBron James's house. They're finding ways to, hey. Let's make some extra cash. Let's make uh, millions and millions by hosting a party at LeBron James's house and buy all of his contacts. And then all hell breaks loose. Shit hits the fan. That's the premise of the movie. Right there. Some people might say I ain't even had to watch the movie because I just gave you what the movie was about. Oh, and they had a lot of kooky stories to where they plug into a, they plug in a lot of celebrities. I'm sorry. I mean, that's the basis of this movie. 
Uh, you got LeBron James, of course, in the movie. You got Kid Cudi. He's playing a weird character himself. I, I, I don't know. Andrew Santino is in this, but he's playing a character. Uh, let's go to the view all, T, because there, there, there's a lot of people in this now. Let me name you all the celebrities. Now, you got DC, 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 <laughs> DC Young Fly. He's influencer, social media mogul. He plays the DJ Vic. Kid Cudi's in this. Tanache's in this. Rotimi is in this, but he's playing a character. He's not playing himself. Uh, Anthony Davis is in this. Snoop Dogg is in this. Uh, let's see. Who else is famous? Who else is famous? T. Real is in this. Lester Purry is in this. Let's see. Brandon Paul Johnson is in this. Uh, let me see. Was he the Black Power, Power Ranger? No. Uh, the guy that plays the Black Power Ranger, he's in this too. I forgot his name. Uh, Demarcus Davis is in this. They're missing some people. Maya was in this too, but that's not on this list. Maya was in this. Uh, Lil Wayne was in this movie for a cameo. Karuchi was in the movie for a cameo. Um, Odell Beckham Jr. was in this for a cameo. Um, Juvenile was in here for a cameo. Who else is, was in here for a cameo? Oh, Kid and Play themselves were in this for a cameo. Mark Cuban was in this movie for a cameo. So again, it was just a big movie where the story okay the story kind of i mean the story was there i gotta say the story was was there but they were just missing a lot of things about the the true story of house party right and after that i just felt like this movie just was a big movie to put a lot of big stars on one screen and to see what comes out with it right I felt like there was not really much. To, oh, Big Sean was in this movie, by the way. Uh, Avil a Young, I think that. Uh, no, that he's a celebrity. He's been in there. Right. And I'm going through this list here because they have the full list of cast. You know, like I say, it's just it's a it's a movie that just highlights big stars in one movie. And there's not really much of a story, uh, of course. And let me tell you the, the kicker T the the thing. Was, so when they get, of course, obviously they get caught. LeBron James comes to his house and say, what the f is going on? All these people in my house, uh, LeBron James, like, Hey, I'm rich. I'm too rich for this. I'm calling the cops. And then Demond's character say, Hey, play me for it. Oh, that's obvious. Oh, of course, LeBron James, of course. And I ain't shitting on LeBron James, but I'm like, okay, the ending of the movie was just so predictable. If you play me for it, then don't call the cops. But you know you're going to get smoked because that's the King James, right? That's LeBron James. So I don't know. It's just, it was just not, a, and I'm not hating, right? Because again, my movies are only on 2B and Prime video. So I, I, as a director, I hate to hate on other movies, right? But they could have made this, this movie could have been better, right? I feel like the story could have been better. The story could have been more intrigued. I felt like the characters needed a little bit more work when it comes to character development, in my opinion. Um, I get the whole celebrity aspect of let's plug as many celebrities as you can in this movie. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't work, right? Um. I just wish that if they're going to make a movie about celebrities like that, they should have followed the roots of um, what's the director's name? Um, Gary Marshall. I think that's the director's name. Gary, Gary Marshall is the director of Valentine's Day, What to Inspect When You're Inspecting, and uh, New Year's Eve, right? Where you had celebrities, a lot of celebrities in this. But it would have been cool if everybody played a character, not just themselves. Just to say, hey, look at me. I'm in this movie. Hey, I just made my cool million. <laughs> right? Um, like I say, can't say it's atrocious. I watched the, the entirety of the movie. Some scenes were funny. Some the very li limited scenes were funny. But I just felt like this story was just kind of predictable. Um, I predicted they were going to get caught. Obviously, we know that they were going to be in LeBron James's house. Obviously, they're going to get caught. Right. Obviously, one of the two characters are going to play LeBron James in a one on one basketball game to make sure that we don't get snitched on. I mean, it, it's very predictable. Right. Um, like I say, I'm not hating because I'm looking at the IMDb page. Go follow me on IM or <laughs> sorry, uh, read my stuff because you can't really follow nobody on IMDb, but read my profile. But anyway, 
Um, a lot of people worked on this movie. A lot of people did. So I'm not hating on the people who have worked on this movie um, because you got a lot of directors of photography, uh, film editors, art direction, set decor. You got all these people that worked on this movie. So I am not mad at the people putting together this movie, but it was just like the story could have been better. Right. Um, I say the highlight of this movie because I'm such a Maya fan. Maya doesn't matter how old Maya gets. She's still fine. Like she sounded okay, Maya. If you listen to the podcast, I'm a, I'm a big fan too. Maya sounds so goddamn sexy. Like oh, she's just so hot in this movie. Um, but shout out to her because she she was so beautiful in this movie. Like she was just very elegant and like a goddess, right? I'm just like oh, that's wife. That's so wife right there. But anyway, like I say, house party. I mean, that's my full review. I mean. It's on HBO Max. If you need something to watch to kill some time, check it out. Right? I'm not I, like I said. I'm never gonna hate on movies that that because I'm a filmmaker myself. I'm not gonna hate on movies, but I felt like there was so much potential for this movie, but they just this is what I like to characterize as, let's say, a cash grab. Right? A cash grab. When it comes to video games, movies, and TV shows, a lot of people produce stuff just to get the cash. Right. And they're not really putting that much development into a movie. Right. And maybe they did. I don't know. But a lot of people have a lot of filmmakers do that. Hey, let's just spit this out. Right. Because it's cash. Right. There's cash on the table. Let's just spit this out. Let's make a cool millions. Right. And boom, there, there we go. So. Like I say, if they would have really spent, and I know with all these celebrities and, 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 and the music and all, I'm sure they had a budget, a big budget for this. I would have spent your number one hit music station. The latest show goes after hours. The Beyond Swanky podcast with Kennedy Lucas brings out more for our Lucas Nation fans. Tune in for reviews, topics, and even special guests. We go beyond the swankiness as it's juicy as hell with our DJ, DJ Lupezzi, playing nothing but the hits on the Spotify podcast version. Live from our studio of Swanky Studios, it's the Beyond Swanky podcast with Kennedy Lucas on Atlanta's number one stations Swanky 93.3 and the Heat 94.6 radio station listen on all major audio platforms like Spotify iHeartRadio Audacity Apple Podcast Stitcher Podcast Google Podcast YouTube and more Live from our newsrooms brings back our hit news network, SNN, with many news anchors like Arthur Brooks, Addison Hayden, and Beatrix Gemma. Brings you stories about the news worldwide. Tune in on Atlanta's number one stations, Swanky 93.3 and The Heat 94.6 radio stations. To get the latest news today, listen on all major audio platforms like Spotify, iHeartRadio, Audacity, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher Podcast, Google Podcast, YouTube, and more. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Beyond Swanky Podcast. Your host, KLP Kennedy Lucas. If you guys missed the podcast from Saturday, don't miss out on it. It's the KLP Aftermath special episode, GDN, GGC alumni. Ebony Nixon Lungans has came onto the podcast, came to the radio station, and we had a blast in the studio to talk about some great stories so again you guys don't miss that podcast this is available right now watch it after this podcast if you will because it's really good now i did say i had some juiciness and we're going to talk about it uh because i meant to say we we got another review but this is more of a hate review but let's get on to it um and i'm sure they buried the hatchet right now um but you guys don't know about this about us, but we, we, we study from other podcasters, whether radio hosts, podcasters, um, for an example, we study from uh, Joe Budden podcast, right? We study from the Breakfast Club. We study from different uh, the Spawn podcast, the Spawn Wave podcast, when John from Spawn Wave have a lot of other YouTubers on there, right? We study from analysts like Melanie Mack and other uh, Review Tech USA. You know, we study from all of these people. And I get really sad when an organization, a podcast or a radio station, 
I, I'm not going to say that they're beefing, but I get sad when, when other people start beefing, right? Now, I, I'm not sure this is beef anymore. I'm sure they squared it, they squared it away, right? Um, but we got to talk about The Breakfast Club just a little bit. Um, so it's been it's been solved and, and read and, and I've seen in news and they covered it on both their shows. But Angela Yee goes on to um, the, uh, what's her name? The T- Tamar, Tamar Hall, Tamron Hall. I think it's Tamron Hall. Uh, she's another podcaster, uh, talk show host. I do agree. Her shows have gotten more messier uh, than usual. But I, I'm not hating on her, right? Because I feel like with her, she has to. Cameron Hall, there it is. I thank you, T. I, I was butchering the name. Um, so Angela Yee goes on to the uh, Tamar Hall show, and of course, and you know, it's been said that you know Angela Yee says that she had to suffer from lack of female staff, where she might. She said that hey, we haven't had that many female producers. And maybe that's maybe not maybe that's not what Angela Yee meant at the time. Of course, news have said Charlemagne the God and DJ Envy say that Tamar Hall's just being messy. Of course, uh, they had Portia from Real Housewives, Housewives of Atlanta, and she's also a radio host. I think she has done Ricky Smiley Morning Show. I remember my dad used my, my parents used to listen to a lot. Um, but it's very, very interesting. Of course, as promised by uh, DJ MV, Angela Yee, they patched their, patched up her comments on Monday afternoon, uh, clarifying she meant that there are no women in the, in the immediate room they film the breakfast club in. She also admitted that she needed to, excuse me, she needed a break from talking to men after taping many episodes, hence the reason her show was created. And that's probably why she said those things on Tamron Hall's um, uh, episode, right? Very, very interesting for that. And it's just one of those things that, you know, I- I'm glad that they squared this away. I'm glad that this was not um, super beef, right? And we, I think we do have a clip here. And for my Spotify listeners, I don't think it's going to play right. But if you're listening on our heart radio, definitely you're going to be able to uh, see it. Um, thank you, DJ Lupizi, for getting that clip for me. By the way, um, I, I, okay, I agree with her, Angeli. I do. I think the situation got misconstrued, right? Um, I, I do think that Tamron Hall was trying to look for a story, right? Let's be honest. Her shows and some things have gotten a little messy. I'm not. I'm not gonna sugarcoat that. I, this is. I believe that. I believe it's because I'm not hating on Tamron Hall too hard. But messy sells. If you if you're looking at anybody that's in the broadcast industry, sometimes not we because I, I don't like to get messy on my show. But a lot of people tend to get messy to get those numbers, those ratings up. Right. That's just. That's just unfortunately how radio broadcasting is, where to some broadcasters, some radio personnel, they want to twist and turn the story simply because our ratings will go up if we misconstrued the situation. So when the situation, and this is what I believe, how the way Angela Yee said it, I think she got set up for Tamron Hall to go in for the kill and ask the harsh questions. And then she had to kind of not Angela Yee didn't bat paddle. She was trying to maneuver through it. And then the story made it seem like she was saying that no woman, there's no woman working on the show, period. Right. Hence why that news got out. Hence why DJ Envy got mad and he tweeted cap. That's a lie. And you know, that's where this all stems from. I want to say, so it's just, it's an interesting dynamic. Um, like I say, I, we just heard it on way up with Angela Yee. Uh, we heard it on the breakfast club. They patch things up, right? Um, like I say, there's no hate on Angela. Yee. I'm glad she has her own show, right? Um, I do miss her in the breakfast club. I do. I miss, uh, the rumor report with Angela. Yee. I do, but Angela, Yee, she's doing what she got to do to secure the bag. She's doing her own show and I'm, I'm very proud. She don't know who we are, but I'm proud of that. Um, I'm glad to hear that DJ Envy did you know, patch it up and, you know, it wasn't no hatred. I don't know DJ Envy personally. I remember meeting him in New York last year. That was 
forever going to be a cool experience. Um, but I, I, I'm glad that there's no beef there. Um, like I say, I, I really do wish talk show hosts and interviewers don't misconstrue their interviewees, right? Because it's messy. Um, and it got us talking. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm talking about it here on my show. Everybody tweeted about it. Everybody's talking about it. So it's it's unfortunate. It's one of those unfortunate things. Um, and, and for broadcasters, and, and like I say, I'm not riding Tamron Hall hard because she's bigger than us, right? She's had this big platform, and we got kind of a big platform too. But, I mean, she's huge. So I can't sit here and shit on her. But I just really wish that people wouldn't try to maneuver and dive and misconstrue for, for ratings, right? Tell it how it is. And I think Angela Yee might have said it a little bit off because she was set up for the kill. That's just my opinion. Um, take it what you will. They patch things up. Because um, I remember, I see, uh, I haven't met Taylor and their producer. I haven't met, but like I see them on camera on the actual video. And, you know, there's there are a lot of women that work on The Breakfast Club. I wish I worked on The Breakfast Club. Um, I love y'all, though. I love our radio station. But, hey, if y'all, if we work for Breakfast Club, <laughs> Power 105, that'd be cool. Um, so anyway, c- congratulations, Angeli. Like I'm saying, I'm glad that they did there's no beef there. I'm glad that they're still friends and there's no animosity towards that whatsoever. What is animosity? Oh, we gotta talk about this game, y'all. Oh my god. This is a game that you guys want to love, but you guys want to hate. Um, my full review of Wulong Fallen Dynasty. Oh, that game came out on Friday. Oh, my God. It's like I want to love it, but I hate it, too. Okay, so I've came to the conclusion, T, that I am not a Souls guy, right? I will say freely on our show here today, um, I haven't played any of the Demon Souls games. I haven't. I haven't dabbled into it. My first Souls game. Oh, I'm about to get a lot of haters. A lot of people about to hate on me for this. But my first Souls type game was Elden Ring. And I didn't like Elden Ring. Maybe I didn't like Elden Ring because it was just that damn hard. And I just could not beat it. I hate that I bought that game because that game was $60. I bought full price for that game online too. If I would have bought this, I probably would have traded it in. But I bought it digitally. So there is no trade in. Um, Played it. Tried it. I haven't put I haven't picked it up since months ago because I died so many times in that game. Okay, that game's not for me. Wulong Fallen Dynasty is the same kind of concept with me. It has this this Demon Souls like element to it, but let me tell you why I bought this game because I want to say from software did Elden Ring and the Souls games. So Team Ninja is a different company, right? They they follow the elements of Souls, but they have their own twist to it. So when I saw Team Ninja, I've had played a, quite a few games um, from Team Ninja, Ninja that I beat. So I'm like, okay, Team Ninja, I'm familiar with that studio. Okay, I'll give this game a try. Guys, you have to deflect and block a lot in this game. And I say, and I got to say this open heartedly, if you're not a fan of Souls games and you're not a fan of dying too quickly and you got to be really, really skilled and you're just a video game player, you, you just, you're not that experienced, but you just play games just for fun. This game may not be for you because yes, I got frustrated. So the game came out Friday. And I played it on Saturday because I gave it a shot. And I played the first mission. You're, you're, that's when you create your character and you're going through the village. I enjoyed it. I like that. That that first part was kind of cool. Like I was like, okay, I, I'm digging this. But when you fight that first boss, oh my god! When you fight that first boss. That's when I was getting so frustrated. That's when you have to parry a lot. You have to deflect a lot. You really got to get into it. You really got to study the moves. 
I died at least 50 times on the first boss because I just could not get the swing of it. And when I finally beat the first boss, the first go round, he turns into a monster and I got to fight the fucker again. <laughs> we and no, I didn't get my health replenished. I didn't get three more health potions. I had to use what, what I got. Right. I died from that guy 20 more times. Um, like I say, uh, like I say, you know, this game is a lot of people love this game and I, I want to try to love it. Right. I, I, I came to the conclusion that I'm not a souls guy. I came to it after playing Wulong. I'm like, okay, maybe this is souls again. I, I'm just not a fan because I bought Elden Ring. I died 150 thousand times I, and I just stopped playing it because I was getting so frustrated with it and I think I, I have it I don't even think I have it downloaded on my PlayStation 5 anymore like I bought it is in my name so I can always re-download it but it's not even on my because I, I know what this game is going to be about and that was just 50 bucks lost right Wulong has that same kind of characteristics where and then he get this thing you got to build up your morale and I'm starting to question that the morale and the raking system really doesn't make a difference because these characters, the people I'm going against is hard. Um, so I beat the boss, the first level boss. Now I'm on level two and I died 50 times. Like, okay, it's the same shit all over again. Um, I really wish they make games for, I don't want to say this, but make, like make games for dummies, <laughs> like make games for, for us players that, that play games for fun. Like we don't, I don't spend hours and hours and hours on a video game. I don't. I wish I could, but you know, I'm an adult, so I have to go to work. I have to run businesses. I have to make money, right? Um, I wish they would have made this game enjoyable for people who may not be experienced with souls. I wish the character bosses wasn't too damn hard. I don't like the parry system that much. I don't. I don't like the parry system. I don't like the deflect system so much because it's a 50-50 chance that you can make your defect your deflection move work right sometimes it don't work and then when you get hit you get hit hard like one swing and you're dead two swings you're dead you're gone right um i don't know i just don't know how, how i feel about this and then like i'm beating up people to boost my morale but if you get touched by somebody not not a boss but like an enemy that's out there on the field if you get hit once just once your morale goes down, making you weaker, right? So when you continue through the game and you have weak morale and then you're meeting these big bosses, you got no chance, right? Because when you get hit, you get hit hard. I wish they would have made this game where if, if it was a morale thing, sure, but don't have a health bar. Make our health unlimited, right? Or make it to where if we get hit and we're dying, we self-heal. Like a lot of games do self-healing some like call of duty like if you, you're getting shot at so many times you go hide and then you're healing back up i wish they had that mechanic then i probably would enjoy this game a lot more right because us gamers we hate it when we die we get frustrated when we die and we can't get it and then we just stop playing it then we're done um so like i say wulong fallen dynasty guys if it's if you're into souls this game might be for you but if you're not into souls this this game is not for you um so i played it over the weekend and i'm on level two right i didn't i didn't get that far because i kept dying and then i put it down and guess what game i was playing t i was playing hogwarts legacy i like i got tired of dying so much so i put that game down and then i picked up hogwarts legacy and i played that for the next couple of hours because i was just getting so frustrated with it um like I say, it sucks uh that games are like that now uh it got an 81 percent on metacritic AG, ign gave it an eight GameSpot gave it an 8, and that's why I gave it a shot, because 80 is still a B, right? Um, let me read some of these reviews real quick. This was a day ago from a review. He said, red dot flashes, and those are when, like, bosses and, and like, many people, too, when they are getting ready for a heavy attack, they blink the red flash on their body for you to get ready to defect, deflect. They said... Red dot flashes, time to deflect. That sums up the that sums the game up. It is a poor version of Sicario. Oh, I hate a Sicario too. I'm sorry. I don't know how Sicario won game of the year that year. That game sucked to me. It's okay. 
the graphics of the game wasn't that bad. It was like a Souls game. Like it just it just sucked so bad in my opinion. I just did not like it. So when I bought Sicario, that was a new that was not a new game. I bought it for 30. I traded that sucker back into GameStop because I bought the disc version. I said, yeah, no, I'm not interested. I'm not into this. Um and a slap of face of Noah Noah uh Noah 2. I haven't played any of the Noah games. Uh it's a fun game for about 10 hours. Mechanics are horrible. No option to change running option from one three on controller. I don't know what that means. I feel that the one I three on the plain palm of your thumbs and wearing a controller is a fast paced game. You have no option to change controls, which would have been done better. Like no way. Like I say with that, I, I, I really wish they had a difficulty option, right? In this game, there's not really an option where you can switch from the switch to difficulty. And that's why I think a lot of people, again, who are not experienced in souls games, they should have had an option to say, okay, for people who are not into souls game, but we want their money and we want them to play our game. Let's make them an easy mode or very easy mode. I would definitely use very easy mode. I could use that, right? Because if this game was very easy, if there was a setting for this game to be very easy, I probably would have picked this game up a lot more, but it's just hard. I hate dying. No warehouse options. Magic is magic is weak. Spells is last last a few seconds. Morale system of the game is busted. I agree with that. I I don't think the morale really does anything. I did Google this one thing because T I needed to learn. I wanted to learn how to beat the first boss because I kept dying 50,000 times. And this YouTuber that played the game that said, yeah, boost your morale to about 25 so what you got to do is when you want your morale to go up to 25 or excuse me 24 because that was the max beat up people for a while go to a flag rest so they can respawn those characters that the enemies you go and beat them up again again be careful because when you're beating them up if you get hurt your morale goes down so you cannot be touched you can't be hurt trying to build up your morale which was obviously the weirdest thing in my opinion so i ended up beating people up for about two hours so i can get my morale to 24 and then when the big boss came for the first level your attacks are a little bit more heavier so they say I, it was kind of the same to me uh flashy red lights become an eyesore they kind of do uh constraints companion systems take away the fun of the game spells or a lesser version of earlier games weapons are not 10 or 12 but essentially around six with the rest having some same movements another thing i had some trouble and this guy this review didn't uh review that but the lock-on system lock-on system's hard is is trash to me um lock on system is the the button you press for your character to focus on an enemy so when you make your attack it's accurate when the lock on system's not working i'm swinging my sword and my my uh axe all over the place getting hurt because i'm not targeted on an enemy i'm just swinging up in the air um so again that's just i don't know this uh i i just hated that this game was so much um I gave it a try. I tried it. Not to say I'm never going to play it again because I did get to level two. So it, it, it is playable. Um, but yeah, not my, not my, not my speed. Um, I, I've, I've came to that conclusion that I am not a souls guy. I, I hate all the souls games. I really do. Um, maybe because I die so much, maybe I don't get it. I don't, I'm not, I'm a, I'm a gamer quote unquote, but I'm not an experienced gamer quote unquote. So maybe I'm not getting it, right? Maybe it's too hard for me. And I'm okay with that. I like a game to have a little challenge, but I like to, to play a game and beat the game. That's the kind of gamer I am, right? I know this kind of sounds kind of babyish, but I get frustrated when I die 50,000 times. And, and let me tell you, when I was playing the first boss, I was at the house playing against the first boss. I was sweating. When I beat the boss, I'm like, oh, thank God. But my shirt was sweating. My palms were sweating. I was legit sweating. And my house had a good degree because it was nice and cool in the house. I'm like, I'm like, damn, this really took it out of me. Like I was exhausted beating the first guy, beating the first guy. I really was. 
Um, and I don't like games like that. I don't like, I like games to play. I like to play games and I'm cool, collected, having some juice and playing a game. I'm enjoying myself. I don't like to play a game where I'm legit putrid sweat because I've been mashing buttons for, for an hour. I don't like to game like that. I don't. I, as weird, as weird as that sounds, I don't. Um, like I say, I gave this game a shot, but uh, yeah, it's just, it was not my favorite, not my favorite take. So moving on, let's go and do this this juicy topic of conversation before we wrap up the podcast here today. Um, the sources of coming from the Breakfast Club, they did this as the donkey of the day. And I thought this would be very fitting because the Shade Room, they talked about this topic of conversation as well. So there's this man out there with seven kids, seven baby mamas. Mm, 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 mm. This dude has seven kids and seven baby mamas. Of course, they don't. He don't take care of any of these kids. He's being irresponsible because, again, God, I'd be damned if you think I'm gonna have seven. Seven kids is a whole Brady bunch. I don't even know how my mom and daddy did it because there, there were five of us. Imagine having seven. Oh, hell no. So seven kids, seven different mamas. I got to say that this is very irresponsible. And how the way this guy was talking, this gentleman, you can tell he was just a very nasty person, a very ignorant person. Because I tell you, one of the things I'm scared of, besides ghosts and, and snakes, and losing money. Another thing I'm scared of, AIDS, STD, gonorrhea, HIV. Sexual transmitted diseases is what I'm afraid of the most. I've I've learned a lot in high school and in college and having bumps all over your shit and, and rashes and bumps and irregular uh, shapes on your penis. I'm afraid of that. I am. So when I say I'll be damned if I if you think I'm going to hit it, didn't pull out, no matter how good it was, didn't pull out. And now I have seven kids by seven different women. You can only imagine the viruses, the disease that you can catch from this. Now, I don't wish ill on nobody, but this man could have died from any of those diseases. He posted his TikTok, so of course, obviously, he's alive. But you got to understand how irresponsible this is. Now, this man says that he's so he 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 was like, "Hey, if I get you pregnant, I ain't responsible. I ain't the daddy." How the hell are you gonna prove that? If that's your semen, your sperm, your cum inside this woman to make a baby, yeah, that's your baby. DNA doesn't lie. Science doesn't lie. But. He's advocating, hey, if you get pregnant, you better be on plan B or you better have that abortion ready. I had the money ready for you. Now, ladies, it is true. You got to be careful who you sleep with. If you lay down with dogs, you're going to get up with fleas. Right? Doesn't matter how cute this man to the woman would be. Pause. Doesn't matter. You got to understand who you who's getting on top of you. Right. Is this a real gentleman or is this a, a young punk that don't know how to be a man? And honestly, I can't say too much because, you know, I ain't I, I definitely don't want kids. But this is a punk. Right. Who probably hasn't been taught how to be a man, how to really take care and be responsible because this is irresponsible. He's one of those dudes where he just want to he just want to hit it and quit it. Right. Condoms all the way. I got to say that on the show, T. I'm a firm believer in condoms. Ain't nothing wrong with using a condom when you're trying to have a good time. Because let me tell you, these women, some of these women, let me rephrase that. Some women out there will lie to you and say, hey, I'm good. I'm clean. You in there getting it in and now you itching. Now you pissing fire because it, it hurts. Now you're getting checked and it turns out you got a STD. You got gonorrhea. You got AIDS. Right. So, like I say, con there's nothing wrong with having condoms, but there's something wrong with having seven kids by seven different women not using protection. 
something wrong with that something wrong with his mind uh and bro bro's going to jail because guess what child support comes in right i read and i see the facebook uh facebook watch videos where these dudes want to have sex not protected sex not really understanding about sex have kids don't want to take care of their kids now child support's coming out of their paycheck and if they're not paying child support yeah you're going to jail buddy he going to jail if you ain't gonna take care of these these kids that are dna proved that they're yours if you say hey i ain't taking it oh you're going to jail buddy oh yeah you gotta pay that either that or prison now, i'm sure bro don't want prison but yeah, you, he's paying for that. I don't know. It's a weird dynamic. Y'all let me know what y'all think about that. I think it's a little bit irresponsible. Guys, if you're out there having sex, please wear a condom. I'm a firm advocate of condoms. Nothing wrong with a Trojan or a Magnum. Whatever you use, there's nothing wrong with that. Use a condom. Stay safe. If you're in there, you're in sex, right? I'm an advocate of safe sex. Always, always, always. Because it's, it's a lot of, lot of diseases out here, for sure. For sure. So that's going to wrap it up here on the podcast. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one as well. If you're watching the video version of this podcast, thank you. On YouTube at KLP Entertainment, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to get notified for more videos, don't forget to hit the bell notification. And if you're listening on all of our audio platforms, thank you so very much. Stitcher Podcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, so much more. Thank you so much. We appreciate you guys for sure. That's going to wrap it up on the Beyond Swanky Podcast Season 2 with your host KLP Kennedy Lucas. We'll catch y'all in the next episode this week of newer topics for the show. As always, I like to say, stay safe. Stay swanky. Peace. You are now tuned in to Atlanta's hottest radio show. Our stories from our studio to your ear. It's the Beyond Swanky podcast. With your host, Kennedy Lucas. On Swanky 93.3 radio station. The Heat 94.6 radio station. The latest show goes after hours. The Beyond Swanky Podcast with Kennedy Lucas. Brings out more for our Lucas Nation fans. Tune in for reviews, topics, and even special guests. We go beyond the swankiness as it's juicy as hell with our DJ, DJ Lupezzi. Playing nothing but the hits on the Spotify podcast version. Live from our studio of Swanky Studios, it's the Beyond Swanky Podcast with Kennedy Lucas on Atlanta's number one stations Swanky 93.3 and the Heat 94.6 radio station listen on all major audio platforms like Spotify iHeartRadio Audacity Apple Podcast Stitcher Podcast Google Podcast YouTube and more KLP Aftermath with your host, Kennedy Lucas, brings out all the stops. Tune in to KLP Aftermath as we have stories, reviews, current events, and even our famous segment, Elephants in the Room. Inspired by the Breakfast Club's Donkey of the Day, KLP Aftermath with your host, Kennedy Lucas, streams on Atlanta's number one radio station, Swanky 93.3 and the Heat 94.6. Radio station. Listen on all major audio platforms like Spotify, iHeartRadio, Audacity, Apple Podcast, Stitcher Podcast, Google Podcast, YouTube, and more. Atlanta's number one radio stations. Swanky 93.3 and the Heat 94.6 radio stations has you covered. From our studios to our newsroom at KLP Entertainment. Listen on all major audio platforms like Spotify, iHeartRadio, Audacity, Apple Podcast, Stitcher Podcast, Google Podcast, YouTube and more.